Okay, so today we're gonna talk about why people think that nootropics or smart drugs are snake oil. And yes, I'm using the tripod because my arm was just like, what are you doing to me yesterday? So I'm not gonna handheld it this time. Okay, first of all, snake oil, that's what you came up with? You could have just said they were fake, but no, you had to be a 1964 gold miner and some some bitches are giving me some snake oil, it's all voodoo crap. You can just call them fake, we are in the 21st century. Uh, which is ironic because the first one I'm going to talk about is science, and that starts off in 1964. In 1964, a Romanian psychologist and chemist named Dr. Cornelio, I probably just mutilated the crap out of that name, but you just gotta flow with me for a second. He, he discovered paracetam. Now, he, he was originally gonna use it for motion sickness, but what ended up happening is when he gave it to people with motion sickness, it did a vast majority of things, from memory to energy, and he, he realized afterwards that he wanted to consider it its own group because it works so much on the brain. He called that a nootropic, Greek for mind bend or mind change. So in the group of nootropics, he said for it to qualify to be it, it had to not only improve cognition, but it had to have neuroprotective properties in it, or elements. Alright, so now we got paracetam, we got this list filling up quickly because there's a lot of natural herbs, there's a lot of chemical synthetics that already fit this description, so now this list is filling up. And around the same time in the 60s, uh, Russian Soviets take a liking to phenobut. And uh, they, they, originally they, they mainly use it for insomnia, stress, anti-depression, anxiety, or social behaviors. And uh, later they find it would be good for a space program. So the Russians uh, gave it to the uh, people going through the space program because a lot of them had anxiety, uh, motion sickness, a lot of stress due to the testing they were doing, and uh, I guess the lack of confidence if you really want to break down to fly a man up into space, right? So they started giving it to them, and it worked great. Uh, as we know, they later moved out of that as, you know, America made it to the moon, and things got a lot more advanced. But now let's keep going down the line. Modafinil hits the market. Now, Modafinil was a little bit different because it was actually produced for pharmaceuticals right off the bat. It wasn't later moved into it like the other nootropics. It was originally used for people who had Alzheimer's and it worked great until it was replaced with something stronger. Also, it, the new drug came out with uh, new side effects. Later is moved to people with narcolepsy. They realized it promoted wakefulness. It didn't stimulate, but it cut the sleep out of it. So, uh, later, of course, pharmaceuticals replaced it. Okay, Lou, right? How is this relating to the topic we're talking about? Well, the point of this fun little timeline that I presented here was to show you that these have been tested and have been used longer than anything on the market right now. They have little to no side effects. They, they've been proven a thousand times over for the past 50 years. Most pharmaceuticals only get run for about eight weeks. And if they pass the trial run, they're released to the public. And then you get to be the guinea pig while you take them and be like, oh, why is my face blowing up or why did my heart stop 10 seconds ago? Well, now you know why. Now, this ironically leads me in to the next one is the FDA approval. Now, people assume that because it's not FDA approved, that FDA is not looking into it. Now, a lot of people don't know how the FDA worked. I didn't really understand it when I first got into this either. How the FDA works is... Uh, if they approve it, they are paying for clinical trials, and that's the reason why they only do pharmaceuticals, because that's going to actually return an income to them, unlike single compounds or workout supplements, that they're not going to make any money, it's not government run at all, so there's really no need to actually do the clinical trials and pay like the $25,000 to do the clinical trials, because you need controlled groups, you need a place to do it, you have to have the controlled, the not, I mean, the... The two controlled groups, one taking the placebo, one taking the one, see if anyone dies or their eyes bleed or something, or they get suicidal thoughts all of a sudden. Now, the biggest misconception is that because it's not FDA approved that the FDA didn't look into it. That's actually false. What the FDA does is they won't run the clinical trials, but they will show up at your doorstep. If you're selling a product that someone is going to ingest, you will have an inspector to make sure that you are putting the proper things you're saying. If you're selling a Drafinil or a Fenibut or something of those lines, they're gonna come to your door and they're gonna be like, prove it to me. 
you know, if you're lying on the ingredients bottles or you're putting something that's not supposed to be in there, you will go to prison for that. So the reason they don't do it, like imagine if like the FDA decided to spend $25,000 to uh, in, uh, approve Monster or dietary pills. Like it would be a waste of money on their part. It would be a waste of time. But they still go to make sure that nothing fishy is going on. And you can get serious fines and serious prison time if you are lying about what you are putting in your product. And the last one, the one I hate the most, out of all of that, that stuff you can learn and overcome. It's what we call bad reviewers. Okay, these people are linked up with affiliates. Now, Brotropics is linked up with affiliates, but you guys know that we'll tear apart Nootropics if we don't like them. Now, the problem is, like, the biggest one is Subutamine. Subutamine is trash. It does not work. If you're using it as the vitamin thymine, then it will work for that. It will work for that part of it, but it's not going to work for the cognitive abilities that you're expecting when you take Subutamine. But I love these reviewers because they, they get on camera and they're like, listen, bro, look at me in the eyes. Okay, this is where you're at, and this is where I'm at, and then everyone watching is like, oh, I don't want to be down here anymore. So they, they buy this bullcrap product, they take it, they realize it doesn't work, and then they, they say all new tropics are snake oil. But in reality, it was a bad reviewer. And I'm not gonna list names. Well, one, there's a lot of names. Like this could be a three and a half hour video right now of listing bad names of, of reviewers that just suck. Sadly, there's a lot of bad reviewers for this, but I think that's any way you go in any section of buying and selling things, you're gonna have people trying to bullshit you and give you bad reviews. That's a big reason why when we started Bro Tropics, the company, we wanted to say, hey, we have to do this together when we make review videos, unlike the Lion's Mane, I did that solo, but for the most part, we do them together because he gets a different effect than I usually get. So you kind of get to see from two different people's point of view how it affects him. Maybe this kid didn't, it didn't work right for him, but it worked good for him. You kind of get to see the in-between. If we both hate it, then you most likely know, like subutamine, it's trash. And then I think we can all agree, at the end of the day, some people will just always say that it's snake oil. One, because they're just a hater and they don't feel like doing the research. Or maybe they just think it's too good to be true type thing. Well, guys, that's the end of the video. So I hope you enjoyed. Like always, remember... Bro Tropics is where the mind takes you to greatness. You didn't think he was here, did you? Peace!